All right, we're talking about the top five interior offensive linemen in the 2024 NFL Draft, and I'm going to let this out right now before we begin by just saying real quick that, no, it's not the same caliber as the top five offensive tackles, but there are some gems in here. We're going to be talking about them, but the grades, they're not going to be up there in the high eights, and we're not going to have any Joe Waltz tied for 8.6 right off the bat as uh, your top guys, but... It, it doesn't matter because there's still a value at this position. Teams always need interior offensive linemen, and it's going to better their team overall when they draft guys like number five, Zach Frazier. He's six foot three, 313 pounds, a junior out of West Virginia, and Alex is going to get a little bit more into the pros and cons about him. Yeah, just before I even do that, yeah, I agree with you, Josh. Really weak guard in uh, center class this year, which is kind of odd, um, but, you know, it is what it is, and, um, there's still, like you said, some good guys to be found if uh, GMs are looking like I am and you are, right, Josh? Uh, I'm just, just kidding, of course. Um, the pros for Frazier, he's a really quick processor pre-snap uh, at the center spot. He gets upfield really quickly to the second level in the run game, um, and he, he's definitely a much stronger run blocker than he is pass protector, um, and, and that's something that's definitely noticeable. And uh, kind of going off of that, his cons, his hand placement in the passing game, uh, causes him to be beat quite often. His pad level is not always uh, at the right at the right spot, and that's also kind of the reason why his pass blocking definitely struggles. But hopefully, some of those things you can kind of teach technique wise when he gets into the NFL. And um, the only other thing with him is he's definitely not athletic. Um, he's definitely your more prototypical old school center. He's not really um, he's not going to move around like Jason Kelsey or some of these newer centers that you're seeing more recently who are putting up these obscene scores at the combine. Frazier. Won't be doing that. Uh, he won't be getting to the second and third level that often, um, um, you know, unless he can, um, unless he can hopefully improve on that. I guess at the NFL level, he does get to the second level, but you don't really see him getting there very quickly. If that makes sense, uh, it makes a lot more sense if you actually watch the film for him. But a really good leader on that offensive line. I think people are are going to value his skills as uh, you know, kind of the football IQ aspect of a center. Um, and I bet you he'd probably interview well because you can definitely see that he's a really good communicator pre-snap. So our projection, or the projection, excuse me, for Frazier is in the second round. His athleticism, a five and a half, pass blocking six, run blocking seven, technique six and a half, size six and a half, which totals to a 6.2 for Frazier. So we actually have him going in the third round of this year's NFL draft. Okay, from number five to number four. Cedric Van Pran, or Pram, uh, 6'4", 298 pounds, a junior out of Georgia. And uh, Alex, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting here. The three guys after this, they're all uh, guards. So this is our last uh, This is our last center. Our, our, yeah, last center on the list. That's what I was just reconfirming real quick, making sure I wasn't misspeaking. Um, he's really athletic. He's kind of the opposite of Frazier. Uh, he really builds himself off of his athleticism. Uh, obviously, 298, he's on the lighter side, so he can really move around. He's got really good high football IQ as well. He can kind of do some pre-snap stuff. Maybe not as good as Zach Frazier does it, um, but definitely still does a decent job there for Georgia. And his run blocking is very excellent as well, something that uh, you definitely, um, you're definitely going to value you know, when you scout him. He's someone who really gets to the second level quickly, even to the third level at times, and I think, that's a really big pro for him. And uh, pass blocking is just not very good at all for Van Praan. Um, Probably the worst pass blocker out of both guards and tackles that I watched. So uh, not very good at all. Let's guys in very easily. Uh, and I think part of that could be to do with his length. Not very long arms at all. Um, and obviously at the center position, not as important as it would be at the tackle spot. But it's still noticeable. Uh, and guys can definitely get through, especially some of these more physical defensive uh, linemen on the interior. So with that being said, uh, projected to be another another third round projection. Athleticism a seven and a half, pass blocking a five, run blocking a seven, technique a six, and size a seven. That equates to six and a half out of ten. So we go another second round pick. So two back to, or actually, sorry, we flip flop from Frazier earlier, who is projected to be a second round pick. We put him in the third round. And then for Van Pran or Van Pran, uh, projected to be a third round pick, we have him going in the second round. So jumps up in our rankings a little bit. So number three, 
uh, Alex was saying, so a, a guard now, and their next three is also going to be guards. Christian Mahogan, uh, Mahogany, six foot three, three hundred fourteen pounds, uh, over by him in Boston at Boston College, a senior there. And uh, all right, so let's hear a little bit more about Mahogany here. Yeah, and by the way, I was totally misrepresenting. Our top guy is actually also a center. I just totally did not scroll up to see him, so. I'm completely mistaken. Sorry about that. Not going to spoil who he is, of course, but I, I think a lot of people would know if they are really into the draft. But uh, yeah, Mahogany, Josh, obviously me, I'm not too happy about it as a Northeastern student, you know, Mahogany BC guy kind of hurts. Obviously they actually have a football team, which is kind of painful as well, but we're not going to bring up all those wounds. He's a really good pass protector. Um, someone who's got really good, um, you know, hand use pad level and stuff like that in the past game. So that's not something you'd have to coach. Uh, and he's really adept to stunts as well, uh, which is something you don't really see often uh, at the college level, especially some of these, like, uh, you know, I guess lower end, more mid round type of guys. Um, and, and he's very good at that. So, again, something that kind of shows, again, his, uh, I've said again, literally five times in a row, uh, his five, his high football IQ. And then cons a couple of things his lateral quickness and with that, his footwork kind of is uh, subpar and something that you can notice when he does get beat that could be the reason why it happens. Uh, and that's something he's going to need to work on. Obviously lateral quickness, not as much, but at least accepting how his lateral quickness is kind of adjusting his footwork to match that. And I think that's something that NFL coaches could do. And a uh, fun fact, this guy actually is showing up to the giants local pro day because he's originally from North Jersey. So in case anyone was interested about that little fun fact. And, uh, alongside that, I'll give you his grades here. So Christian is projected to be in the fourth round. We bumped him up to the second round in this. I thought it's him a six and a half pass blocking, a seven and a half run blocking, six and a half technique, six and a half. There's a lot of six and a half. So I'm sorry. And then size finally also a six and a half, four out of the five categories at that same uh, ranking, which Overall equates to a 6.7. Don't worry. There wasn't another 6.5 there. The total is a 6.7. And like I said, grade, a second round grade uh, for Christian Mahogany there. Um, maybe a little hometown favoring uh, type from, from Alex maybe. there. Northern Apparently Jersey. the Giants really like him is what I'm hearing. Well, I think Art Stapleton put that out that the Giants are interested in him. So who knows? Maybe uh, he's someone that they look at in the second or third round. Well, we'll have to wait and see, but for right now, we go from a Christian to a Christian. This time it's Christian Haynes, six foot three, 317 pounds out of UConn, a senior. And um, we're getting up there in the grades here. I, well, a little bit more. Like, like Alex said, not anyone too spectacular, but Haynes, he'll go into right now. Yeah, Haynes, um, he was somewhere, uh, someone who at the beginning of the process was projected. Like even I saw him sometimes in mocks at like the late first round mark. And this, um, what I mean early in the process, I'm talking like still maybe November, even October when I was kind of just looking at mock drafts for fun, whatever it may be. And he kind of has fallen off a little bit in terms of public opinion. Didn't exactly, um, you know, do anything special, I guess, in the combine or at his pro day. So maybe that is why. And some of these other guys are moving up the board, but um, definitely a solid run blocker of uh, someone who's reliable in that aspect. Um, you know, he can get to the second level. You do see that uh, despite maybe not being the best athlete. Um, he's got really a solid anchor. He's got good footwork as well in the past game, uh, which is something that's obviously helpful. Um, and then the cons for him, like I mentioned, not the best athlete. Quickness and agility is something that he really struggles with in particular. His strength's pretty good. Um, and then his just using leverage, his leverage in the run and pass game is something that uh, in both aspects, he just doesn't really do well. And obviously that's part partially to do. Uh, with coaching, doesn't have the longest arms either. So, uh, you know, hopefully he can improve in both those aspects with some, with some, you know, NFL level coaching. But yeah, I really like Haynes, and uh, I, I think he is now kind of slowly starting to recreep up draft boards. Uh, the latest one I saw, he was pick number thirty nine in the second round. So um, we'll see. Maybe he even sneaks in the late first because remember, uh, he at this point, at least for us, is the top guard in the class. Um, so this class is very weak. So if you need a guard. Uh, and you didn't get one in free agency. And I think, you know, we were talking about this a few episodes ago, Josh, during like free agency when everything else was happening. All these guards are getting paid crazy money, $20 million a year for Robert Hunt. It's just the first one that comes to mind. We're saying, ooh, could it be that obviously they're emphasizing offensive line? Part of it is that this guard class is just not very good. And teams who were maybe in position to pick some guards 
just start feeling like none of these guys are really at the level where we can plug and start them right away, uh, or even as potential starters, maybe more long-term backups. So that, that could also be part of what happened in free agency there. Yeah, Alex, but also you have to factor in, too, it, it, it all depends on what the Giants do at pick number six. If they end up picking a quarterback, True. then I think the rest of the draft really is implemented or kind of leans towards offensive linemen to protect whoever this quarterback is that we would think surpasses Daniel Jones and he gets cut next offseason, blah, blah, blah. We can go down that path any day, but not right now. So just <laughs> keep that in mind. Uh, with Haynes, though, he the first guy, it took till number two, but the first guy where our grade matches the projection in the second round, by the way, his athleticism of six and a half, pass blocking a six and a half, six and a half. So they keep on coming around here. I, you um, know, I, when, when I'm putting in the grades, Josh, I'm not thinking about the other grades. So, like, I just, I guess I, those are popular numbers, right? Six and a half, seven and a half, <laughs> because it's just slightly above average or slightly below average. For me, seven is like average average uh, you know in terms of like uh yeah like a second round pick basically um yeah. so that that's kind of how i look at it anyway that's why it's above like just slightly above or below uh run blocking a seven and a half technique six and a half number again size seven equates to a 6.8 out of 10 and i already mentioned second round we talk about all these second round guys even a third round guy in there but this person he's a first round player Number one, Jackson Powers Johnson, JPJ. What a name, by the way. Six foot three, 328 pounds, a junior out of Oregon. Yeah, uh, a guy who he has flexibility. Um, that's almost why I was kind of mistaking earlier because he has played guard, uh, both sides, left and right guard in college. So could potentially project as a guard as well. Uh, but I think center is where he's going to excel the most. He's really quick and agile. Um, he has that leadership skills. He communicates well. Uh, he gets the second level in the run game very well, uh, even uh, when he's, you know, kind of stuck behind some other Oregon offensive linemen who are doing like all sorts of weird things. You know what the Oregon offensive line reminded me of sometimes, Josh? Like, do you remember last year when we'd have some like, I don't even know, like some random guards in there and like Mark Lewinsky would be like running into like, Saquon Barkley and like all that kind of stuff. There was lots of that in Oregon's offensive line field. So uh, sometimes you'd well, be kind of detrimental to his his play. What were you going to say, Josh? I was just going to say Bo Nix was luckily able to still be successful there. So at least they did something. Yeah, things, that's right? true. Yeah. Um, no, their offensive line wasn't like off. There was just like a couple of plays where they just had some crazy like mishaps, uh, which was just very funny. Um, yeah, he's a really, really good run blocker. Second, third level. Um, you know, he makes – he. He gets all his blocks, you know, he's just, he's very good run blocker technique wise also uses his hands well um, in the run game. His hands in the passing game though, uh, not as good, something that needs to be coached up as well. And then I think his limited length uh, kind of prevents him from using some of his leg bridge in the passing game and running game as well. And that length also, I think, causes some of these holding calls that we see as well. Not that they're significant holding calls, but I think um, it does make sense, obviously, you know, guys with small with less length do tend to get more holding calls. So uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. But definitely the best interior guy in this class by a wide margin. All right. And there you go. Our top guys. But I'm not done because Powers Johnson still has to get his grade. All right. Late first round pick. I kind of already spoiled it, though. Late first round in both <laughs> the projection and grade athleticism an eight. Pass blocking a seven. Run blocking an eight. Technique a seven. And six and a half first size which had to get it in there 7.4 out of 10 so your top five into your offensive lineman according to the giant take podcast obviously number one source for all your draft coverage is number five zach frazier number four cedric van pran or prom I, I i feel like van pran sounds cooler so i'm going with that i think it number is prom but yeah whatever it is pran <laughs> for now uh number three christian mahogany or mahogany again you, you choose uh, number two, we choose, no, Haynes. we choose, Josh. We choose the name, actually. We choose because we are your number one place for draft coverage, obviously. Anyway, <laughs> continuing. Uh, and number one, Jackson Powers Johnson. I'm sure a lot of people in the YouTube comments are going to have fun with that comment itself. Uh, so, you know, do what you must. But anyway, that's going to do it uh, <laughs> for the top interior offensive lineman in your 2024, in, in your, in the 2024 NFL draft coming up later this month.